Okay, so there is a sixth question to the exam. I forgot to I forgot to type it up in that other PDF. Um, so it looks like this. So it says express the volume of a sphere in terms of its diameter. And the second thing is to find the derivative of what we come up with. But let's just worry about the part A first. So in calculus when and just in life when you're using math to solve problems you frequently have to do something like this where you know two quantities and then you have to write down an equation between them and it's a basic skill so we're just practicing it and which one do you like better? Um, so for A, okay, now the hint that we get is that volume is equal to four-thirds times pi times r cubed, where r is the radius of the sphere, of course. r equals radius. So how does that help? It helps because there is a relationship between the radius and the diameter, and we know that the radius is just half the diameter. Alright, so that actually turns out to be really helpful if we write it down in an equation. So radius is equal to um, the diameter over 2. Okay, fine. I know some of you maybe you're bored, you're disinterested, you already know all this stuff. Do you? I don't know. So, okay. So now that you have this, what's the magical final step? It, there's nothing to it. Just take this thing that radius is equal to and plug it in for where radius is and then as the as the French say voila you've got an equation for V in terms of D so let's do it so you have V is equal to 4 thirds pi okay so make sure you respect this little exponent so the stuff inside is where r was, and it's got to be raised to the third power, so that's where d over 2 goes. It goes right inside there. Okay. And if you want to, you can simplify some and make a nice little home for d. So it's 4 thirds pi. And um, how does the cube work? Well, when you have the cube of a fraction, it's the same as the cube of the top over the cube of the bottom. So this is the same thing as d cubed over 2 cubed, which is 8. This simplifies a little bit because the 4 and the 8 kind of cancel, and you get, um, this can, you can think of this as pi over 3, and this 8 has become 2 because it canceled with a 4. You have d cubed over uh, 2, and so this whole thing is the same thing as pi d cubed over 6. And there's nothing special about that, but it's going to make it easier to do part B. So remember, part B is to take the derivative. So it says actually V prime of D. So now we have V of D is equal to pi D cubed over 6. And to finish up, all we have to do is find V prime of D and if you try to do the Leibniz notation, you'll get dv over dd, which looks terrible, which is why I'm doing it this way. All right, so how do you take the derivative? What happens? The 3 comes down. So maybe I keep worrying that people are not going to process the fact that this pi over 6 is really just its own number. So it's going to make me feel a little better if I do it like this, okay? So now, if you think about the power rule, you know, it's always a times the variable. So this is just the constant part. It's just a number, pi over 6. So the 3 comes down when you take the derivative, and the pi over 6 is still there. It just sits there like a lump. And now you take 1 away from 3, and you get 2. And you're done. And then if you're nice, you don't have to, but you could could write it like this, and that's it. 
that's it. That's the problem, and that's also the end of the practice exam.